Hey! Dum, 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 dum. Adam Spire's life as a soldier is hanging by a thread. With only a couple of days left of passing out, the captains threatened to send the needlework Supremo back home. To be told, no, you're not going to go and pass out. Theoretically, you would go back and start again. But for me, it's so close, you know, 12, 24 hours, just to say to your parents, he's not passed out. Or, and it's, it's that almost letting people down. It's not a conscious thing. It's not me being insubordinate or, you know, difficult. It's just that I'm not made that way to do it. And you know, part of me wants to go home to say a lot of it, just get on with it. But the other part of me just wants to continue. But then I feel if I continue, it's going to be the end result the same. But I'm not actually going to finish. So it's all mixed up. It's not only D-Day for spires. Today, Waterloo Platoon go into battle. Morale in two section is high, and the lads are ready to fight side by side. But over in one section, someone's getting on people's nerves. Don't let the stars get in your eyes. Don't let Michael Honzik's been trying everything to win most improved recruit. He's taken bed box for extra drill, painted the billets single-handed, and even shined for the padre. But Honzik's brown nosing is making him unpopular. Willingham is also up for most improved, and he's determined that Honzik won't get the award. I've got a lot of fluff on that. Yeah, okay, don't rub it off in the middle of the room. No. are much better over there. Honzik's bed. Honzik's bed? Put it in his mess tin. I'd be, I would be so annoyed if he actually made most improved. That would just be absolutely, totally wrong. Because he's getting people to do stuff where he's like... Oh, well, the thing doing... is, he hasn't improved for shit. He hasn't changed. Exactly. Not only is he still a prick, he's still doing no work. He's getting everyone to do it for him. As the lads scoff down a last meal before the exercise, they know that there's all to play for. Gardner is locked in a close battle for best recruit with Hamilton. Honzik needs to buck up to win the most improved, but Willingham's breathing down his neck. And of course, Spires has to prove that he's more than just a dab hand with a needle. The next 24 hours will separate the men from the boys. Tell me you cannot afford to fall asleep at this stage of the game. Get up there, you bloody pot. Get shoved up there. Weapons inside the vehicle. Are you comfortable? No! You know my love and love it away. Waterloo platoon move off to the battlefield. A stretch of MOD land five minutes down the road. They barely pass through the gates when all of a sudden they run straight into an ambush. Platoon return fire, but Bren gunner Dan Neal is already out of ammo. Get up there now! I've got no magazine. Get up there! I'll grab it, I'll grab it. Hitman! Hitman! Get up to the Bren's thing, you've got the magazines, haven't you? At the first sound of gunfire, his magazine carrier, Ross Pittman, has run the wrong way. You, 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 fast, then, Pittman! Where's our magazine? 
Get out of magazine out, Daly. Get out of magazine out. Hurry up! Stand by! Rapid! Fuck! Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! Sir! The enemy's withdrawn! Stand by! Move! Get back! Get back! Come on, work hard! <laughs> After the ambush, the lads from Waterloo Platoon fall back, regroup and hand out more ammo. It's a chance for the boys to reflect on their first taste of action. When we jumped off the back of the, uh, back of the truck, I was well rushing. It was a well good place. Uh, it, was, it was all a bit rushed, though. I, mean, I was hoping for a little bit of a sit down and everything, but that didn't happen. And keeping up so far, um, that was the main thing for me, just to keep up with the section. It's been straight into it, which is good, really, because I was a bit nervous beforehand, but I'm a bit more up for it now. I think we're in for a, a long 24 hours. <laughs> Already battle-hardened, the lads move out once more in search of a safe harbour to set camp. It's like Vietnam, but more disorganised. They find a suitable area and set to, digging shell scrapes to lie in for the night. This is your grave, Daly. <laughs> Won't be surprised, mate. It's all very exciting, running around, shooting things. <laughs> no, it went pretty well, actually. There was no, like, no big mistakes. Nobody really got picked up for anything. And uh, it went pretty well. A couple of people's rifles jammed, so they were stuck without being able to fire. But, uh, yeah, overall, it was pretty successful. During the exercise, the corporals will be keeping a keen eye on all the lads to see how they perform. Spires. 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 Get your ground kit down. That's finished. Did you dig any of that? Yes. Well done. But not everyone is putting in as much effort as Spires. Yeah, the people are not impressed me. Are Ponzik, Holbrook, all the usual. Even Neil is working like a Trojan. If Ponzik um, spent as much time working yeah. as he did talking, he'd be down to Australia by now. Tell me when you get tired now, a little bit. OK. Onzik's standing by while his teammates dig his shell scrape. Not wise when Corporal Joe Murray's around. You better start switching on, boy, cos see if you don't, I'm going to take you outside the woods and I'm going to bury you. Don't move! Do you understand? Yes, Corporal. Now get a move on! Every time you put your left foot forward, are you f***ing up? No. Every time you speak, are you upsetting Corporal Murray? I think so, Corporal. Right? Now it stops as of this moment. Yes, Corporal. You start working to impress, yes, or Corporal. I will rip out your Adam's apple. Yes, Corporal. Right? Yes, Corporal. Now I'm not pissing about with you anymore, Hansi. You want to pass out on Thursday, you start putting in the hours. Yes, Corporal. If you don't, you're out the gate. <laughs> With everyone dug in, the lads fire up the stoves and cook their rations. When we went out on manoeuvres, you all cooked your food over open fires in billy cans. And then they used to do tin spam. They used to fry it on open fire. Oh, and you used to have that and potatoes and things like that. Oh, that was the taste of it. I used to love it. And curried lamb, uh, minced beef, which is quite minging, and ginger sponge. That was quite nice. We were on manoeuvres, and I came across a clearing. Uh, there was a table laid with, with a cloth, and there was uh, silver and, and, and uh, crystal on it, and bottles of wine, and sitting around these languid officers on manoeuvres, this was. Well, the rest of us were struggling through in, in simulated war conditions. <laughs> there they were, having a bloody good time. It's just like being at Glastonbury Festival without all the music. <laughs> really enjoying myself. 
but also, um, we, I mean, we've done we've done a bit of hard work today already with our with our little trench, which I'm quite happy about. Um, shallow grave, I reckon, <laughs> rather than trench, really. Yeah, <clears throat> but it'll be nice and cosy tonight when we're getting our heads down. <laughs> While some of the recruits get their heads down, Corporal Murray puts out a sentry team to keep watch. No one will be breaking into this camp tonight. <laughs> 